Our group researched caffeinated energy drinks. Our research question was, do caffeinated energy drinks improve athletic performance? And our claim is that yes, they do improve physical performance. However, a solution is that they should be consumed in moderation and they should be substituted with natural alternatives when given the opportunity. We're going to be talking about this through four perspectives. I'm going to start off with the historical. One thing you should know is that caffeine is one of the most used global energizers. Starting off in the 1400s, caffeine was originated in the Middle East. Fast forward to the 1700s, caffeine was combined with fizzy waters and sold in large quantities in pharmacies due to its health promoting properties. In the 1900s, caffeine was combined with heroin and cocaine and because it elevated physical performance levels in speed, energy, and reaction time. However, unsurprisingly, this was banned in the 1960s by the International Olympic Committee due to health risks stated by the International Society of Sports and Nutrition in 2021. In 1962, lipovitamin D made its debut in Japan. It was developed by Taisho Pharmaceutical Company and was considered the first medicinal tonic that helped elevate performance levels and mental awareness because it combined caffeine with vitamins. In 1997, Red Bull Energy Drink made its first appearance in U.S. markets. It was developed by Dietrich Mateschitz, an Austrian marketing director that influxed the boom of energy drinks in the United States. As popularity in these drinks rose, people began to question if there were any pro-benefits of them on human health. I'm going to be talking about one of them. Caffeinated energy drinks improve athletic performance for cognitive function when taken in moderation. There are three main elements that make up these drinks. Caffeine, defined by the National Library of Medicine in 2021, is considered a central and nervous system peripheral stimulant that stimulates mood and memory. In addition, taurine, an organic acid found in all energy drinks, helps stimulate cardiovascular function and performance levels for skeletal muscle. Lastly, Simple sugars in the form of glucose help with brain function because they promote mental acuity by allowing us to enhance our learning capabilities and our mental retention. Now Kate is going to be talking through the cultural lens. Looking through societal cultural lens, popularity of energy drinks has escalated in recent years. Looking at this graph from Gregory Research, money earned from energy drink sales has increased since 2020 and is expected to continue to increase until 2030. According to David Hammond and Jessica Reed from the University of Waterloo, much of the popularity of energy drinks is due to the advertising of them on billboards, TV, social media, etc. Brands will appeal to potential customers by listing hydrating effects or increased to athletic performance, while also subtly appealing to their audience by maybe including sports or celebrities like The Rock, who probably have nothing to do with the drinks itself. Since advertisers are successful in bringing in business for energy drinks, they are positive because they lead to more athletes getting the beneficial effects of energy drinks, which my teammates are discussing increases athletic performance. Looking through a scientific lens, caffeinated energy drinks have both a positive and negative effects on an athlete's performance. In order to find the right, in order to find athletic success, one has to drink the right amount of caffeine. The general recommendation is 300 milligrams per day, but factors such as body weight, gender, age, emotional state, and personality type all play into one's caffeine sensitivity. As shown in the Yorks Dodson Law Bell Curve, when one drinks under the recommended amount for, the, for, for, their, for themselves, one will experience an increase in attention span and interest, while also, also soothing anxiety and increase in pleasure and enjoyment. When one drinks too much caffeine, their central nervous system becomes over aroused causing impaired performance due to anxiety, jitterness, and tension. When one drinks the optimal amount of caffeine, as shown at the top of the curve, one has reached optimal performance. Energy drinks also help an athlete perform at the top level by aiding in aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, as seen in this diagram, is the process of where cells turn fats and sugars into energy with the help of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration is the same thing, but it does not use the oxygen. Caffeine has an inhibitory effect on the adenosine receptors up in the brain, which promote the production of the phosphorofructinase enzyme. This enzyme is involved in glycosis, the breaking down of sugars on a cellular level. When phosphorofructinase is inhibited, aerobic and anaerobic respiration begins. 
When those two processes have finished, ATP is made, the body's energy currency. Aerobic respiration makes 38 ATP, while anaerobic only makes two. This is due to the different cycles they've gotten undergo. According to Jacob Dunn and Michael Greiner, two High Point Medical School graduates, ATP is a single nucleotide that consists of one adenine, one ribose, and three bonded phosphate groups. ATP sustains the energy an athlete needs to get them through their game while promoting muscle recovery post-performance. While there are many positive effects that energy drinks bring to an athlete, there, one must watch out to how much they drink these on a regular level due to the impaired due to the adverse health effects one can face. With ranging from 80 to 300 milligrams per can, if drank on a regular basis, adults can experience seizures, cardiac arrest or failure, and the breaking down of the enamel. The American Pediatric Association advises all young people to avoid these drinks at all costs due to the adverse health effects a child can get because of the high sensitivity they have to caffeine. Children can experience headache, upset stomach, high blood pressure, seizures, and abnormal heart rate. Next will be Brooklyn talking about the long-term effects in the futuristic lens. So when looking more into the futuristic effects of these energy drinks, one concern are the withdrawal symptoms. These symptoms include headaches, tiredness, depression, irritability, nausea and vomiting, and stiffness. Overconsumption can also lead to many long-term effects, including worsened anxiety disorders and heart conditions. Regular, regular use can also lead to sleep problems, thinning of bones, increased stomach acidity, worsened blood pressure and high heart rate. In a collection of studies summarized by Mother, he found cases of both cardiac arrest and effects to the central nervous system, including seizures and manic psychosis. Kate's gonna talk about our solution. After looking, at, <coughs> after looking at the potential drawbacks of caffeine energy drinks, we've determined that athletes should only consume these drinks in moderation and should often substitute them with natural caffeine. Overconsuming these drinks can be dangerous. According to Alberta Health Services, overconsumption can cause many long term effects such as thinning of bones and increased anxiety disorders. Therefore, athletes should only consume these products in moderation. And according to the National Library of Medicine, moderation is around less than five energy drinks per week. Although natural and artificial caffeine, which is in energy drinks, have many of the same effects on the body, generally, natural caffeine is better for the body because it includes more nutrients and less harmful compounds. An article from Healthline said that coffee, which is a form of natural caffeine, includes magnesium, potassium, vitamin B, and other antitoxins. Natural caffeine generally also has less processed sugars, which means a lesser risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And the only limitation to the solution, however, is that some artificial caffeine sources do include nutrients. For example, bubbler includes vitamins and also antitoxins. But in general, natural caffeine is better for the body because of its increase in nutrients and lesser harmful compounds. So looking at the future of energy drinks, they will always be a part of our world and they will continue to be popular with children, teens, and athletes. However, students and parents must, must educate themselves about the risks associated with the consumption of energy drinks. This will limit the negative effects that are experienced Encouraging healthier alternatives such as drinking plenty of water, getting plenty of sleep, and maintaining a balanced diet will also limit the, um, limit the reliance on these energy drinks. This way people can maintain their energy without the negative effects associated with drinking energy drinks. As Kate mentioned earlier, another alternative is the use of natural caffeine instead of the synthetic caffeine found in the energy drinks. This natural caffeine, such as teas and coffees, will give similar positive effects to the athletic performance while limiting the negative effects that both me and Alex talked about. Hey, Kate. Yeah. Uh, give one specific way your thinking changed as a result of learning about Brooklyn's findings. Yeah, so I think hearing about Brooklyn talk about the withdrawal effects of <clears throat> caffeinated energy drinks 
gave me a more negative view on energy drinks because it kind of sounded like they were drugs that you can't go without, and once you get hooked on them, that you are going to experience side effects if you withdraw from them. So it gave a more sort of counter argument for me or why athletes shouldn't use energy drinks. Okay, thanks. Um, Alex, reflecting on your colleague's work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem? Um, I think Brooklyn's because personally, I didn't think much about how this will affect me when I'm like 40 or 50 when I drink a Celsius or a bubble before a game. So I didn't realize how like negative these health effects are and how I may not feel them or see them right now, but they will eventually catch up to me. So that just helped me identify the severity of the problem. Okay, thanks. And Brooklyn, um, if you had another team member, what other perspective or limitation could they have researched that would have made a useful contribution to your work? I think if we had another teammate, an ethical lens could have deepened our <coughs> arguments. They could have expanded on the arguments that we already made and go more into depth on whether they are ethical or not. For example, with Kate's argument about how the companies use advertisement to attract, attract the athletes, we could have talked about if it was ethical or not for the companies to say what they are saying and use the celebrities and athletes as their advertising. Okay, uh, and Marina, uh, what's an example of an argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude and why? Yeah, from Alex and I's individual reports, we decided to exclude our research on like going more in depth on athletic performance levels, like for speed, um, agility, and especially in like aerobic and anaerobic activities. Like we had some research from the National Library of Medicine that contributed to like maximum speed and like cycling research, but we decided to exclude it from our presentation because we basically ran out of time and felt that our other lenses reflected how it affects athletic performance more in depth. Okay, thank you.